Yes, people, and we're back with another episode of On the Judy. And today, my my guest, I'm gonna list, I'm gonna list some of the things that he's won: two Premier League titles, FA Cup, a League Cup, played at the Euros, played Champions League, and got over 500 career games. Joni and Lescott, thank you for coming on, bro. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Like, what's going on? What are you up to, man? <laughs> um, at the moment, there's there's a few things going on. Um. I recently became one of the coaches, assistant coaches for the England under twenty ones and Decent. Yeah. That was a that's nice. <laughs> it was nice to say that. Uh studying to to get a master's degree um in sporting directorship. Hopefully that is the case next year. I can pass that. Um <laughs> and then obviously punditry and family life and that and just got a good balance, man. I'm I'm happy where uh, things are at the moment. Man. It's good to see like a retired player with so many things going on normally you know they lose their purpose you know how did you find when you retired how did you find like not having a routine that was the hardest thing I, I never knew how much I relied on that to be honest when I stopped playing like the off season so it was like what four or five weeks and you're thinking yeah this is nice and, <laughs> and then everyone's going back to pre-season and I'm like Ooh. and then the season was starting and it was like really kind of like what, what am I doing? What, yeah. what can I do? I can't. There's only an hour I can spend at the gym. My family's life continued as it was before. So their routine didn't change. And yeah, I didn't really have a direction I was going to go. And I wanted to play one more season, but it was, uh, so I'd left Sunderland was my last club. Yeah. So I'd left there and I thought, you know what? I'm, I want to play. I, I was in a place where I just wanted to enjoy playing rather than anything else. Um, and then I got asked to go on trial to a couple of teams. I thought, you know what, it's time to retire. Yeah, I just team. won the Prem, I can't trial. Yeah, yeah like, and the team just got promoted to um, Sheffield United. So okay, they'd just okay. been promoted to the championship. And I don't think all of their players had played in the championship. I was like, oh, yeah, if I'm getting asked to go on trial, it's probably time. <laughs> I called it a day. And then punditry was kind of an opportunity. And I'm yeah. thinking, I can't go on TV, talk about how to correct, uh, correct things and then being exposed. Potentially being exposed, uh, so I was like, "Yeah, that, that's cool." It no, all good. You say you're studying a master's. What are you studying? Just uh, the courses, obviously, sporting directorship and okay. uh, leadership roles, and how to build cultures and, and stuff like that. And like, growing up, no GCSEs, uh, <laughs> dyslexic, serious. Like, so, football was the only thing I wanted to do. Um, so now it's like finding this is yeah, it's a little like my comfort zone, but. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Are you getting on with uni? I, I went uni. I hated it. Like first year, loved it. Second and third year, myth. Yeah, yeah. I, I get where you're coming from. I can't say that just in case it affects my grades. <laughs> and listening. But nah, yeah, it's not comfortable. Um, so I recently got a, a tutor on top of the support we have and just so I can get an understanding because, again, academic learning is not something I've done for what, 20 years. But what helps is the other other methods of learning now like it's not just the same way it's not just yeah. textbook reading and writing and kind of thing you can obviously audio formats and stuff like that and everything's online and there's there's loads more ways to learn and absorb information which which I need no decent uh, you said like England coach do you ever join in with them like yeah to last trip <laughs> yeah we had to join in a couple of times but my Achilles oh <laughs> my god it was wild but no to be fair I, I still have a mess about with friends so I can functionally move I can't yeah. move to their level but we um, like my previous role at Man City with the loans we had to obviously do pre-season so there'd be many a day I was joining in with them so I could not I could join in and not embarrass myself okay, I could so stand out but I wouldn't embarrass myself <laughs> I was going to say because the new generation of kids they're all like everyone's got a bit about them yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm thinking are you getting a, are you getting a nutmeg or <laughs> nah nah I'm not exposing myself <laughs> to them things yeah but I know what you mean like there's a mad level of ability now um, that possibly wasn't the case uh, when I was younger or their age but yeah it's crazy How different is it from when you played for England to that now? I've seen it as a coach I, I don't even I don't see it as a coach I see the perception of and the want to play for England is different I think um, I was aware of everyone kind of not everyone sorry put everyone in the same box but there was a lot of there's a feeling of people wanted us to fail and was waiting for us to fail yeah. and then say oh look they're not as good as they think or this that and the other 
But I think everybody wants it. Every England fan wants England to do well now. Yeah. You know what I mean? I get that feeling when I watch, uh, watch tournaments and see them interact with each other as well, the players. I think social media is a way of interacting because when I was 21, the only time you've seen the players was on the camp. Okay. You didn't yeah. have everyone's number. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. you didn't, there wasn't no following on Twitter or Instagram, so you couldn't see them. You'd just seen them when you're there and yeah. you build up a relationship for like 10 days and then you go away for a couple of months and then you come back. So you never really had a true relationship with anyone but now it's different yeah. they obviously play for a bigger diverse group of teams which I think helps to fan base as well because I think when it's certain teams like Chelsea Liverpool they don't want to support Liverpool players teams playing for England they might, they might say they do but they don't want their, <laughs> the Liverpool player to be man of the match yeah. or the United player but when it's five six seven teams representing England it's like oh now we can all we can all want them to do well so what you're saying is that it's more United as it was 100% I, I think if you look at say Jack Grealish everybody loves Jack Grealish yeah. and then he went to City and his first game he's getting booed he'd never been booed before so why why are we booing him now yeah. just because he's gone to Man United he's, he's the same person he was I mean Man City he was the same person he was last week but again it's just different I think when you have a bigger diverse number of teams playing for England and in the squad I think it helps the support okay okay it's a good way I've never yeah. thought of it like that yeah. but um Let's talk about your upbringing. Grew up in Birmingham. Birmingham's quite no notoriously known for like, you know, like being like rough and yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of shooting, stabbings and all that, kind of like London. Did you grow up in like a rough part of a... No, like my, my area was was okay. The school was, again, the area that mum brought us to. Um, it was it was nice. It wasn't the pushiest or the cleanest <laughs> area, but it was it was safe for us to go out and stuff like that and... Yeah, a lot of my um, my school friends um, give me stick for living there, but then <laughs> later on, won the move there. You know what I mean? Okay, but, yeah, yeah no, it was a it was a safe environment. I guess it had issues like every place does, but no, I wasn't I wasn't at threat. And going to the school I went to helped because the areas that were notorious so that you're probably talking about, they all came okay, to okay. our school, so our school was known and regarded as one one of the baddest schools. But in regards to the area I grew up in, it was fine. And I'm sure you know, when you have a, an ability, like say football, yeah, everybody, I'm just friends with everyone. You know what I mean? Like I can play with all the big kids. I can play with all the age groups because I can play football. And that was my pass through to, to whatever, staying out of trouble. Okay. And where did the f love for football come from? Like, would you, was you born naturally good at football or did you like have to work hard outside? And I would say both. I would say a uh, bit of both. Naturally had the hunger to want to play every day. Um, my brother, my older brother played. He played for Aston Villa, so, um, and had a career. So he was like 32, yeah. played for Sheffield Wednesday and Bristol Rovers and Stockport when they were in the league. So that helps, again, people want to be like big brother, don't they? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So playing with them and, and his friends and helped me adapt skills and different abilities. Uh, but I, I loved it. And I think that was probably my biggest strength is that I loved it more than everyone else I just wanted to play all the time like I used to finish school run home get changed and before people were leaving I would go and then just be on the AstroTurf so I could play with them yeah. and then stay there till like after youth club and then <laughs> come home and stuff like that nah decent was you always a centre back or nah. you know, like Sol Campbell was he a striker and then he turned into centre yeah, off I think everyone was a forward <laughs> and then you just get filtered back you know what I mean when you realise your ability is not at the the level of the forward yeah. players but yeah no I was a I was a forward um, midfielder then like Paul Lintz was my my hero kind of thing you know what I mean and then you realise as time went on I realised yeah I'm not going to really make it as a midfielder so still made it then yeah it? yeah yeah I, would, I wouldn't I change it but yeah nah I realised because I stopped playing at what 14 I went to Wolves and they re they knew I was going to be a centre back okay I was like this hey, for me man serious so I just come out wait so playing. so I went back to grassroots so wait, you, you get signed by Wolves yeah and you drop out because they wanted to play centre half yeah so I'd played been playing midfield and then the centre back um, was injured so they said can you play there? I was like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Play there for one week and then it's two weeks he's, he's out and then he comes back and I'm still there. I'm just like, nah. <laughs> and that was just about the love. I just, okay. my love for it was more than anything. It yeah. meant more than anything. So I was like, mom, dad, brother, I don't want to, don't want to go there. Surely so, they're saying like, you're mad. Like, 
Well, my, my brother and dad was like, kind of, are you sure? My mum was just like, yeah, but well, you're not going back. You oh, don't okay. want to go back. So that was it. And then I just went back to grassroots because it was at the st stage where you couldn't play for anyone else either. So I couldn't oh, play okay. some the league. Oh, okay. I yeah, love yeah. going to play like play for Wolves on a Sunday and then go back and play Sunday <laughs> league, get back quick so I could go and play another game. And then they stopped all that stuff. So that was a, a factor. And then the last year of school, I realised I want to play football or have an opportunity after school so I went back into it so what they just let you back no <laughs> again our school team was decent oh, okay okay yeah so we all read off for a trial at, um well your whole school team yeah we were decent though oh, okay yeah so we all read off for a trial went to Derby um and then three of us got through three of us got through to the to the like the last round yeah. and the last round was all the trialists against the team and that they're, they're, they're star man. This time I know I'm a defender. I, I realised, yeah, if I'm gonna have a career, it's, I'm at the back. But their star man um, was a striker. Okay. Um. So I obviously done well against him, and they said okay. And it was Steve Round, assistant manager at um, Arsenal. Oh, he was oh. under 16s manager at, at, at Derby County. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then he, um, and they said, yep, yeah, we want to sign you. So I was gonna sign. Um, and our first game was against Wolves. <laughs> but the guy had still been speaking to my dad this whole time and just said, oh, we've been keeping tabs on him and okay. stuff like that. And it come to, remember, um, work experience? Yes, yes. So I was going to Derby for two weeks to do my work experience. Um, but Wolf said, I oh, will take him for a week. And Derby can take him for a week. I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then I went to Wolf's first week and then they offered me a contract straight away. Decent. My mum said, well, you're not going to live in digs. So. <laughs> <laughs> so otherwise, otherwise I would have gone to Derby so why didn't she want you to live in Diggs because I would have had to, had to leave home oh. and people didn't do that that many people they weren't doing that then like it's different now because we know nowhere's that far but before my mum was like nah, nah. your mum was your and I was the baby so I was the baby so I was like yeah so you stayed at home so is your brother's playing at this time yeah my brother's yeah. at Aston Villa so yeah. what pro yeah, yeah, yeah so, he's a pro yeah so she wants both the football boys close to home she didn't stuff. lie she, didn't, she wasn't I'm not gonna say I'm not, I don't know this, but she probably would have let him go because he was probably more mature and ready okay. for that than I was. Um, like because obviously my I got run over and that's yeah. she, she, it was just different. So I was always her baby, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So that was probably why she said nah. And I didn't. It wasn't an argument. It wasn't a discussion. <laughs> it was like you're not going to live, oh, live in digs. So walls. It was fair enough. You see, speaking about your accident, um, I know you speak about it all the time, but you know, like you get some pros who like make fun of it like I think Patrice Patrice Evra yeah, Patrice says something been a how, does, how does that make you feel I started to say to him because I had to like call him and that and then say like it's Big real man. this like <laughs> it's fun on the internet yeah if you see each other it's real yeah you know what I mean it's real and better yeah like are we really about that because I'm not that guy but yeah. I can be that guy okay if, if anyone can be that guy because what I say is I've had the stick and this banter for me whatever but my kids go to school man and <laughs> If, they, if they're coming home telling me, I could get wound up now. If they're coming home saying, Dad, someone said this or someone said that. It's on. It's on. Yeah. It's for your kids and that, you know what I mean? So, and I know, like, my mum and my, my both my parents, obviously, had to live through that. So, for people to take the piss, nah, I can't, I can't have it. I guess. I, I've had people calling me about that as well, because there's been a few people, to yeah. be fair. Leave for Bizzle. Serious? Yeah. yeah. Leave for Bizzle. No. Yeah, bro. He called it a couple of times and I, yeah. Bro, okay. So Lethal B, when you, when you see no, Charlie, not, yeah? no, not, not on the beef since. thing. Yeah, I've okay. seen him since and he was like, it was, it was a calm thing, but because we've got mutual friends. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm a, let's say humble because I think everyone is humble, but I'm a placid guy. But if we go there, I can go there, there. Well, yeah, we're yeah. just there. Everybody, everybody knows somebody. <laughs> so it's never going to be who you know. It's yeah. just going to be me and you. Yeah, facts, facts. <laughs> you know yeah. That's all it is. Facts. Yeah. But I guess because it happened so young, you've grown up yeah, I've getting it, yeah, getting it, and you've kind of built that. I'm not gonna let that happen. That like, happened with me. Like in school, I've got a big head, that's why I wear hats all the time, innit? I know the feeling. A like, kid like, slapped my head and all of this, and then one kid done it and he done it again. The next time he done it, I just punched him in the face. Yeah. Didn't do it again. No one troubled me again from then on yeah. about my head anyway. But um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I as I said, you just gotta it's just part of it growing up, it builds resilience and stuff. But yeah. It's more of the impact it has on others than it has on me. Yeah, facts. I can take abuse. I'm, I'm calm with it. But if I feel someone else that I'm close to is hurting or affecting, then... No, I can, I can respect yeah. that. I can respect that. Um, so back at Wolves, 
you get your work experience, join a youth team. Back, I think these things are gone now, like jobs and stuff. What sort of jobs did you have? Like whose oh, boots did yeah. you clean? I, I cleaned Keith Kell's boots. He's a coach, hey, coach manager. Yeah. Oldham, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, um, so he was like the Wolves captain. Um, so I used to clean his boots. Um, who else? Jason Roberts. I, do you remember Jason Roberts? Yeah, so I yeah. cleaned his Wigan. boots for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Wigan and that. Um, and who else was that? I might know. Paul Simpson. I think he's um, assistant at Bristol City now. Okay, okay. But again, yeah, they were the, the boots I cleaned and obviously did all the jobs and moved the goals. And, and because I was kind of local, so yeah. like we had a few boys from um, Ireland that get used to go home at Christmas and stuff, but the local lads had to stay in. To stay in. So I used to have to travel and just, just to move the goals. <laughs> but that was only for the first year because after that, I could train with them. Yeah, so yeah. I was training with them. So... I was like, nah, man, I'm not coming in to do this. And, and then it was like, okay, well, you can join in for training. Decent. So I was training. So Decent. Fine. What's your favourite? I've never asked this. What's your favourite pair of boots? Ooh. I'm an ambassador for Puma now. So I love Puma. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, there was, remember the, um, the first like T90s, Ronaldinho, and it was like, Wayne Rooney used to wear them all the time, but yes. it was the one with like... Uh, a white and a gold yes yes and the, obviously, the tongue was like a rectangle was it he didn't ones? have a tongue it didn't have a tongue it was one of the he just had a big 90 on the side on the instep of the boot oh yeah 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 Yeah. yeah. so they were probably the first ones I wore that weren't black and like the coach I had uh, Terry Connor I was so nervous <laughs> to wear them let's just see him <laughs> just for him to see him I was like I didn't put them on I had the like same kind of routine yeah when I got them, I changed it, man. I thought, I can't put them on until I'm going out. Because if he sees them in the change rooms, it's gonna he's going to make me not want to wear them. And then he knew they were coming and I took them out and because I just kind of changed his sponsor, put them on, he said, you better play well today. <laughs> I was like, TC, man. <laughs> Don't need to wear that. But yeah, he's, uh, he was like the biggest football influence on me. Okay. Uh, so he kind of, the transition from the youth team to the first team, he like... Always seeking his approval. Okay. All the time. Nah, decent, decent. Yeah. Shout him out, man. Um, I only asked because um, my, my one of my mates made it pro and another one of our mates used to clean his boots so we just banter him about it. So I'm just asking about jobs. Yeah, nah, there. because um, like Keith Kilson, Tom, who lives up by me now, he, uh, like I've known him since he was like, like four or five. Yeah. And now when we see out and then we see people, he's like, yeah, he's digging my dad's boots and that. <laughs> but yeah. Keith Kill was a big deal though. You yeah, know he is, he is. No shame but you've that. won the Premier League, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But you see like being sponsored, yeah? Mm. How does it work with like boots and stuff? What? Do they just send you a load of boots? Because I watch a lot of behind the scenes stuff and there's always a package being delivered or, you yeah. know, in your locker, you've got like six pairs of boxes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mad. It, it depends. Like I knew, I didn't want to, have so many I knew what boots I was wearing and, and what style like six studs for the games I would never wear in moulds in, in games and stuff like that but in terms of how it works you just ask for how many and when you need them oh serious like yeah so like the person who I work for at City Fergal he was my Nike rep okay whilst I was playing and then he got the job Man City the year I joined and then we were just always friends and still are and then obviously finished retired and he was like well what are you doing and then he offered me the role nah, there, decent. so, so what would you do you can't obviously the boots you stop wearing would you just throw them away or just give them away I've got them oh, to be fair I've got well, a lot, a lot of them boots, in the boot yeah, yeah oh, I've decent. got them in the garage I've got a lot of them and just for the kids like the ones that I've I never got to wear which if one of my kids make it then I'll give them um, South Africa World Cup I got injured so I didn't go And but Nike were doing this thing where I, did, I think most of them do it now where there was all the boots were the same colour just different yeah, st yeah. styles but the same colour yeah. so I've got them okay. and I, I don't think you could buy them until you were like and there's a special edition as well the players were a special edition yeah, so yeah. I got the special edition just <laughs> didn't get to wear them no decent yeah. decent yeah I think only a few brands do it they don't always do it no yeah I think it's different now but yeah the boot industry is crazy man Nah, if, yeah, you, if your kids enjoy football, they're laughing, boy. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's wild. It's, it's wild out there. <laughs> nah, sick. Um, okay, like you said, you was training with the first team at 17. You made your debut at 17. Yeah. How is that going from, you know, quitting because you are you don't want to be a set, then going back 
and then what two 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 years later yeah. playing for the first for your like, hometown or nah nah local well, town? yeah well team I didn't support I supported Villa okay, okay. Up because I was Birmingham so <laughs> wait 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 hold on so you supported Villa but you played for Wolves and West Brom yeah 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 <laughs> but I supported Villa like up until I went to Everton when like at them times we're kind of fighting for the same oh, okay, yeah, yeah. position in the title so I can't really want Villa to win then anymore <laughs> but up until I played in the Prem I wanted Villa to win okay. I only wanted to play for Villa that was my only dream and your brother played for them as yeah, well. So yeah, so we used to go there and obviously get tickets as a schoolboy. So I'd go to some games and stuff like that. So that was my team. But yeah, in terms of the, the, the kind of transition was was quick. But I, I, and I, I don't want to sound an arrogant, but I knew it was going to be that quick because I knew I wanted it more than a lot of other people. Yeah. There was nothing I wasn't going to do to make myself better. So like people talk about sacrifices. Sacrifice to me is something that two things you want to do and you have to choose. I, I never wanted to go out. I only wanted to play football. Okay. So I wasn't sacrificing anything. Yeah. I only wanted to do that. So I'm just making that choice to do that all the time. So it was never a thing of, well, that's going to hinder your performance or affect you in training. Well, I'll just don't do it then. It was that simple. <laughs> okay. And it was probably only the diet thing I kind of had to learn more about. What, you was eating injured. bad? Yeah. Well, I could eat what I wanted and just play. <laughs> And that really wasn't really a thing. I yeah. was kind of of a generation where no one really went to the gym before or after training. Yeah. And then people ate and drank what they wanted. So I wasn't a drinker, but I, I could eat. So, so you've seen actual transitions. So you've gone from the footballers who drink after a game yeah. to like all the nutrition stuff. And how have you, obviously you're still in good yeah. shape now, but how have you dealt with, like how have your, how do I word this? Mentally, how have you dealt with that? Sorry. Um, I don't know. Again, it was, it's mad because when you talk about the transition, like when I hear like pundits talk about people dancing after games and stuff, I'm like, you used to smoke <laughs> and drink. Surely that is worse than people dancing. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh my, yes. How how can you I'm compare? I'm going to name Paul Merson. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, I'm, I, whatever, whoever it is, Mercy's a cool guy though. He's cool, whoever, yeah, he looks cool. Arsenal saying, legend and yeah, I'm an Arsenal but, fan. Yeah. But I'm saying, how can you discourage a man for dancing in a celebration or in the change rooms, but you weren't drinking beers. <laughs> like we were a couple of days, yeah. couple of days later. But in terms of the transition, I was probably lucky that the timing was right for me because when I got injured early on, which helped me be a better professional. Before that I was just playing on the ability yeah. and just relying on that where it was explained to me now this is quite a serious injury. So focus and and that helped. And then like I remember I was at Everton and I was doing warm-ups. And again, at the start, I would be embarrassed to do them because no one else was doing them. So I would like do my warm-up in the changing rooms and yeah. it was, we went from like a few exercises to like 40 minutes. <laughs> and he was like, what's he doing? I was like, this is what helps me. And then I would do my recovery after. So I was always the last one to come out and see the family because yeah. I'd been doing my bike ride or my ice baths, whatever. So again, I just knew it was going to make, wasn't going to make me any worse. So whether it was going to make me any worse or make me better, I was going to do it. Yeah. And that's how I used to think. I was going to ask like later on about, because you had bad knees. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to turn up earlier to see the physio on match days and stuff like that? But you just said like yeah, you're in like, after. It was a routine that wasn't, it never stopped. So like I couldn't have more than two days off not doing something because okay. it, would, it would be worse for me. So I knew there's always something I have to do and, because I still enjoy playing now. I still have like things that, like functional training I have to do just so I'm not sore. <laughs> if I'm playing like power league and that. And that oh, I'm just like, yeah, well, I don't enjoy it that much. Were you Astros or Boots man on that 3G? No, I'm Astros because I, I need to slide, man. If I, if I don't <laughs> slide, I might pop my knee. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just making sure there's a little electric slide uh, in there. <laughs> I can't turn a shot, but I, I'll take that over Better. there getting injured. Better. So when you make your debut, what's your family's reaction? So you've got Big Bro, who's a pro. Yeah. Mum and dad is supportive. And then the baby has come through it all and now he's playing football. Yeah, it's mad. I don't know. Um, they were just happy in that. We were all just happy. And it was funny because at Wolves, because I was younger than that, so we had to go and do the jobs and we had to go to yeah. all the games. But I would live the furthest because I was Birmingham and everyone else lived Local. Wolverhampton. Yeah, yeah. So it was probably like 50 minutes. But obviously night, night games... There's no buses and that, so they used oh, to give me a driving? taxi. Nah, I wasn't <laughs> driving yet. I would drive past 18, so they used to um, give me taxis if I had to be do my duties and that or stay after games. Yeah. 
But because it was my um, my first game, like for whatever it was, my my mum and that thought I was getting a taxi, but. I didn't, I couldn't get a taxi. I got the bus home, man. <laughs> what? You had to get the bus home, man. I was in a suit and that as well. Nah. And it wasn't a suit like, it was like trousers and a sh uh, trousers, a jacket and like, it wasn't a mi mixed match <laughs> suit. It wasn't a real suit. Yeah. So I'm just sitting downstairs, couldn't get up, up upstairs on the bus and that with my suit. Had, so. Wait, so you just played a yeah, game yeah. and it was it championship? Yeah, championship. Yeah, championship. Yeah. And you're getting a bus home. I had to get the bus home, man. Yeah. <laughs> my, they just kind of thought I was going to get the taxi that I normally got, but before I hadn't played, but. Now walls are not paying for my taxes and I'm not on pro money yet. I'm not on real money. Like, yeah. I can't dip into that, man. <laughs> <laughs> can't, man. <laughs> That's my trainer money there you're, you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, as a young, like back then, as a, as a young player, how did, how is the transition from academy dressing room where you're like you're the big fish to now the first team dressing room and everyone's looking at you, you're the, you're the kid? Yeah. Um, I wasn't, was I the big fish in the duty team? Well, 17 debut. Yeah, yeah, but then I was kind of in the first team dressing room. So I was just, it, it was quick. Okay. The transition was quick. Like, as you said, I went from, I learned early not to speak because my first preseason now, we're doing a um, like press day. <laughs> and um, we're just talking. And I've just honestly, I like innocently said, oh, yeah, I hope to train with the first team. I trained with them a couple of times. Um, just before Robbie Keane had left and I said, yeah, hopefully I can be in around it and then potentially um, make my debut or be on the bench come Christmas. Yeah. Obviously, it just said Les got once uh, first team by Christmas. Like, that's the headline. <laughs> so I've gone back to the youth team and that and <laughs> that's are giving me stick. And I don't, obviously, at the time I'm thinking, what, what's going on here? Why is everyone like kind of upset? Yeah. Thinking I'm an arrogant, like this young kid and that. I was like, that wasn't what I meant to say. So I just had it in my head, but it was in my head that was gonna, that was going to happen. So then, come Christmas, it was Millennium. Oh, so, yeah, so there's random a lot times, going on. I'm, everyone's going on, and I'm saying I'm not going out. I don't need to go out <laughs> Millennium where we were. So I was just staying in, doing my thing, and then training come, and then two weeks into the year, I'm on the bench. So it kind of happened, but I kind of learned early then not yeah. to speak about things before. <laughs> so that was kind of like the blessing in disguise. But in regards to the transition, it, as I said, it was. It was quick, so I did that. I stayed with the first team then for that half of the season, but we'd still play reserves. And then the following season, I was playing. Yeah. So it was like second year, I was 17. So I'd only left school 18 months ago. And then I was in the changing rooms and we had good pros, man. We had really good pros that I'd spent time with and they met me yeah. aware of how to conduct yourself and my family upbringing as well. My, and that was probably the best thing is that my mum and dad and my brother were like, it's a hostile industry football. If you yeah. know, you know. Yeah. But yeah. As long as no one's racially abusing you, physically abusing you, then don't come home and be complaining to us <laughs> about what has been said or what's been done. If they're yeah. asking you to run, run, run. And that was it. So I just had that mindset of, well, I can't go home and tell them because I'm not going to care anyway. You know what I mean? So <laughs> should job in it, it. Yeah, that was it. So we just did that. And again, the transition was cool. And, and that's what helped, like I say, the older pros probably a take to me that I was willing to just get on with what I was asked to do. Not decent. Do you feel you you were ready, like, to step up from reserve academy football, unrated football to first team football? Yeah, I, I, because again, I was probably lucky in the terms of in terms of my attributes and strengths were relevant at that time. So I was naturally quite strong. So yeah. like fifteen, I could handle myself. Like I could train with the reserves and, yeah. and know. I'm not going <laughs> to get, get bullied, muscled yeah. out, you know what I mean? So, and that what the game was kind of about then, especially in the championship, it was very direct yeah. and physical and I was mobile enough. And then obviously I learned to harness other skill sets and and not just want to use my strengths all the time. And that was kind of explained to me earlier. So I was grasping things of, yeah, these things you're good at, these things you're not, work on them and don't be in a rush to, to do these things yeah. that you're good at all the time. Okay, okay. Um, so the next year you're playing, then you finally get, you win promotion. Yeah. So how old are you at this point when you... Ooh. The Premier League, I was 21 maybe. So it's a couple of years now because, yeah, that was this year I missed through injury. Okay. Yeah, so I missed that whole season um, through injury. No, I'm, uh, let's go back to winning the promotion. So you yeah, play we, no, we only got promoted, yeah. So we got into the playoffs. Yeah. 
and we lost. Oh, you lost? Yeah, we, the first time. We like, didn't lose in the final, we lost in the semis, but we'd been like high up and then the following season. So okay, yeah, yeah. The Sorry. following season. So, uh, yeah, it was my third season. Third season, we got promoted to the Premier League, but I'd missed, I was missing the whole season. I didn't think that was going to happen and then it happened. So, so like, you're, in, you're finally in the Prem, like, you surpassed Big Bro in the Prem and you're injured, like, how are you feeling? You're young as well. Yeah, I was I was okay. I'd never oh. been injured before and I didn't know what the Premier League was about. So <laughs> Wait, what, it's, what, it's aspirations what, to play in the Prem now, isn't it? I don't know if it was then though. It was just to play football. I had a simple mindset of just want to play. Like I was playing football regardless of, yes, it was for in the Premier League or Wolves or whatever. Was, I just wanted to play and then when we get there, I didn't realise what it was. Like the Premier League wasn't like now. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? There was one game on a week or whatever. There wasn't <laughs> like no one was getting daily exposure. So it was different, but it was the following year when I got fit, we played Arsenal in the cup. Um and it was Henri and Patrick <laughs> Vieira and them boys at Highbury as well. Yeah. And I realised, yeah, I've just missed a good a season. This. I've just missed a year with all this. You know what I mean? So then it was kind of realization. So again, it was like a wake up call. It helped me think this is what I want to do. This is how I want to, where I want to play. Where, yeah. My football. But I guess that experience made you get your head down and then you get signed by Everton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, it was, uh, that was a, a long, frustrating like um, transfer. Like they were still speculating about my knee. Was, oh, serious? That was a question mark, like literally my whole career. So if we scan my knee, it's a mess. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> How do you play five O's then? Yeah, just because I do the functional stuff. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm making that hurt. <laughs> but yeah. on a scan, yeah, it's it's not a knee you would want someone to have. But my record was my medical. So like prior, I got back fit. So I missed the whole year. And then the next two seasons, I was still at um, Wolves. I think I played, I, I played every game basically. Um, so I played in every game for two seasons went went to Everton and then they were questioning me and saying well I was saying but I've just played, yeah, you just played every game, more right? games than anyone in your squad <laughs> the last two seasons and I went to Everton and played every game for them for three seasons that's mad so for five years I didn't miss a game that's mad like, yeah. so I'm I gonna, think it was only I'm clap to that I think there was only a couple goalkeepers that had, in that period of time had played more games than me so um that was what I prided myself on. It was being obviously not all the games were good games, but, yeah, but just being available was was my medical. So again, hence why I'm going to Man City. There wasn't many questions because they knew I'd be available. They knew I had a structure that kept myself. Yeah. Good. What's your secret? Because to play every game for f what five years yeah. is mad. Yeah, <laughs> mad. It was mad. <laughs> to be fair, what was my? It was just knowing what I needed to do. So again like Instagram and all these things weren't a thing so I to, remember I, was, I had a program I had to go on to to the internet write it down because our phones didn't have the internet and write down the program and then do go into training and I probably oh. wasn't even doing it right but because I was the, probably the only one doing it I remember yeah. going in like Monday, Tuesday Wednesday at Wolves but no one was in the gym when I was in there so Regardless if I'm doing it wrong. No one's telling you, yeah. <laughs> no one's doing it. So it's got to be better than everyone else not yeah, doing yeah, anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was kind of helped me develop an understanding. And then uh, I left Wolves and then I realised the level's going to be higher. So I got a sprint coach. And again, just tried to do things a little bit different and make the best of what I had. No, decent. Yeah. It's like you just knew to look after yourself. So yeah, 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 you did it. Yeah. You must have been buzzing. So as you go through your career, you've gone from no one in the gym to like the back end of your career. Everyone's always in the gym. Yeah. Like you've got to go to the gym. You've got to do your rehab. You've got to do your recovery. There's a, a physio and a doctor and a yeah. coach for every part of your body. You're oh, just... yeah. <laughs> like if, if it was now, I'd, be, I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd, I'd, I'd have played on longer because things are catered for that now. Like, as I said, like the first five or six years I was learning on my own way yeah. now like you said the specialists in them areas and them fields and they help you develop and help you stay fit and stuff like that so I'd have loved it I'd have loved it now <laughs> um, how did you find relocating because like you say your mum didn't want you to stay in digs it's hard you know <laughs> my wife I haven't given her a shout out but yeah she needs a shout out <laughs> um, she yeah she moved with me up north we had our oldest before 
and it was tough, man. Yeah. It was tough. Like our families are from Birmingham. Yeah. We live in Birmingham. So yeah, to um to move up there and to just be away from home. Honestly, after two weeks, if Everton and Wall said they would have sent me back, I would have gone back. Serious? Yeah. I'd have gone back. So how long did it take you to settle to say, right, oh, I'm here now? Five, six months. In the season, though, because like at the first, I didn't feel that um not not I was respected, but I wasn't like I wasn't that guy anymore. Was, okay, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Not that yeah. I needed to be that guy, but I didn't even know what it wasn't to be that guy. Yeah. So I went to Everton and I remember that Joseph Yobo, like I'm signed and he's asking me what position I play. I'm like, rah, this is, this is real. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so now but, I need to be like, okay, so these people really won't know me. So there might be a lot of other players yeah. that don't know me and stuff like that. So again, I kind of had to just rethink of how I conducted myself and the perception of people. Yeah. Have from people from Birmingham, you know what I mean? So I was aware of all them things. Yeah, and yeah. What helped was... Uh, we went on a trip. It was later on in the season. And uh, we went to New York. So I'm, I'm playing now. I'm establishing the team and yeah. stuff. Getting well with everyone. And we're going to New York. And um, the manager's like, we're going there for three days. So you can go out and stuff like that. So I've took responsibility to look after the lads. So I was just on my shoulders thinking, this is my time now. You know? This is where I shine. Yeah. And then, so I sorted it out. So I was like when we were going out for dinner or whatever, I, I was arranging So you picked all, all the so, stuff in your yeah, places? Yeah. Obviously a couple of lads had never been. So yeah. that was kind of, ah, uh, Joel's all right then. You know what I mean? <laughs> so then every time we went somewhere, it was, was all on Joe, I, was, yeah? I was events planner. You know what I mean? So that was my job. <laughs> That's a bit of pressure though, because if you pick one bad club, you're done. Yeah. And it was catering for a, a wide, yeah. yeah. A couple of generations was in there as well. You know what I mean? So you got to make genres. Yo, jo, um, yeah, Joseph Yobo. Yobo and Jagielka happy and also like, like Pinar Stubbs, and all yeah, of that. Them, yeah. th them ones were easy because the same in my age, but it was like previous generation to, okay. to this generation that want to drink and want to party. But these want to just party or these want to dance <laughs> and I'm like, these just want to drink. I was like, we've got to cater for everyone. So, But again, I was like, I would did the music in the dressing room and all that stuff. So I was, I was going that direction. Decent, anyway. decent. Um, Let's talk about the Merseyside derby. Did you know how big it was before you went there? Yeah, you, you'd be aware of it, but it, not to the extent of to you playing any derby. And I, I would I would never disrespect any group of fans by saying that was the biggest or United okay. was the biggest. I was going to ask that. Because <laughs> there's no way you can tell me that get, your derby doesn't mean more to you than Another, their derby yeah. means to them. Yeah, facts. You know what I mean? So... You can't say just because they may have a bigger stadium, but Wolves, Wolves West Brom, that meant the most to them. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so it yeah. meant a lot. So I'd, I've had obviously fierce derby experience, but my first derby was nice, man. We won 3 0. Like they hadn't <laughs> won for a while, and I'm there. And yeah, we're 3 0. Hold nice. on. I'm just thinking you played in Merseyside, Manchester. Yeah. And uh, went Black Country Derby and then Blues Villa. That's mad. Yeah. So. Yeah. How do you like? How do you prep yourself? Because you know you, you do. You, sorry, do you get players that are like, oh, like this is a bit mad. I'm a bit nervous. Or is um, it all? I'm trying to think. Has anyone game? admitted that? No, I don't think anyone has admitted it like that. Um, but again, it may be the case. It can you can you case. tell? Like, if you punch a pass into someone and their first touch is baggy, like you Ooh. know they're not up for this. Ooh. Don't name names. Just say yes or That's, no. Uh, um. <laughs> Yeah, I've done that a couple of times though. What, baggy touch? Game, nah, baggy pass. Oh. And they've had the baggy touch, so it's my fault, <laughs> but it looks like it's their fault. <laughs> yeah, I remember I did that to uh, my full debut for England. Oh, yeah. Against oh. Russia. I was nervous then, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that's that's, that's turf nature. as well. Oh, in Russia, yeah? Yeah, it's in Russia. I'm, I'm not, On your knee as well, yeah, that's a bit mad. It's, it's wild, it's wild. <laughs> but I'm, obviously, I'm, I'm ready to play and... I'm going to blame Micah as well because he broke my routine, yeah? Like, I had a routine before I was getting ready to games. Yeah. And he's just so relaxed as he is now. Yeah. He, that's how he was and how he was when as a player. So I remember I'm getting ready and just get a knock on the door. And he comes in. I'm thinking, what are you doing? I'm trying to prep mentally yeah, yeah. for my game. He's just sitting there on his phone and just... I'm like, nah, you need to get out, bro. You need to get out, man. I, I, I can't focus. And I, but I couldn't tell him, get out, because then he's going to think, why is he nervous? <laughs> 
<laughs> so I just have to make him sit there. Oh, so I'm no. just like, yeah, so that kind of broke my prep. But then in the game, what you're saying, balls come to me and like, it's going okay. You know when it's going well or not. Yeah, just, yeah. Nah, I'm on the borderline here. <laughs> Ball comes and I've like drilled a pass into Stevie G. But on it, but if he was looking, it's clean. But yeah. it was so hard. There's no way he could have controlled <laughs> on the 3G it. 3G as well. Yeah. And he's zipped up. <laughs> and he's like, he's miscontrolled it. And he's giving me a look to say, mate. I, I knew it was my fault. <laughs> I knew what I was doing wrong. But I just kind of like looked away as if to say, Steve, you got to control that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was my fault. <laughs> well, you wanted the defenders like, like that. But if it wasn't Steven Gerrard, yeah? So you're back. Where was you then? City or Everton? Oh, I think I'm at. Now nah, I'm at Everton. Yeah. Whoever's in midfield. Hey, hold that. Nah, I was never that guy. Nah, nah, nah. I, I've, nah, nah. I've seen some defenders, yeah, you know yeah, like, yeah. Shout loud. Oh, mate, people, yeah. giving shit parts and they're like, hey, fix up or bat something. Batthink, they're called. Huh? Batthink. Remember Batthink, <laughs> Wings of Steel. That deflection yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I know them ones, but nah, I was never... Not to Stevie, anyway. <laughs> nah, that's <laughs> nah, big nah, Stevie, nah. isn't it? Like, Not your players, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, back to the derby. You don't really hear much of the Everton side. It's mainly because it's Liverpool... Mm bigger club like you don't really hear much of how Everton fans feel and stuff like that. you just hear the Merseyside derby a lot of Liverpool a little bit of blue yeah. when you lose are the fans upset <sighs> what <laughs> and that's a stupid question but... no but I know what you mean yeah nah it's, Cause it's, like, it's a friendly derby it's, it's no, a derby but oh, that's the thing so when I first went there and it was fierce but the fans would sit together. Yeah, they're like family in that, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's like families, different houses, the same household have different fans. And I was when I was there, I'm seeing blue and red <laughs> in every section. I'm like, wow, it's kind of cool. And then as it got on, it weren't that cool. Um, really? So, but to be fair, my derby record for Everton wasn't that bad. Um, yeah, we, we probably lost more than we won, but like I scored in the FA Cup game. Wanted the cup. Oh, I wanted to give it to them. As well. Oh, he didn't. I was gonna. <laughs> and Victor and Achibi grabbed me and said, "Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it." He's a big lad as yeah, well. So. And he's telling me that to do, it and he's kind of like, "Yeah, give me the little bear hug." Is he, he's local lad, isn't it? Is he from up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he must know. Yeah, yeah, he knew what what it was about. So, but I was ready to give it to Max. They used to give me abuse, man. Yeah, uh, Liverpool. Yeah, real abuse. That's mad. Um, made it to Wembley with Everton, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost though, innit? Yeah. To be fair though, that was a, a stack Chelsea team, man. That team. Yeah, was, was it Mourinho days or was it just nah, before? Nah, before that was it. Hiddink. Oh, Hiddink. so they had some money then. Yeah, then, oh yeah, yeah. It was real Chelsea. Yeah. yeah, it was Abramovich Chelsea, and then like it was Balak, um, Lampard, um, Prime Essien, Mikel, Mad. Mad. Terry Cavallo, Sh- strongest Nicole. midfield in the world. It was like up front was Drogba and Anelka. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it was stacked, man. And we scored like first minute. Okay. And I was like, ooh, here we go. And then they kicked <laughs> off again. And it was like it was the kickoff of the game. It was like there was no change in what... You know, normally you see, you can see it, sense it, someone's yeah. kicking off. and No, there was no nerves, nothing. It was like, okay, we'll just keep on going and doing what we're doing. And then, yeah, they, they scored, I think, Drogba scored a header. Shock. Yeah, yeah. he scored a lot of finals. Man. <laughs> yeah. He beat me as well. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I think it was Lampard. Lampard or Anelka scored from far right. It was a nice finish though, man. Okay. So, that was, that was a stacked team. That was a stacked team. You see that? Though. You just said Drogba, like, went ahead of against yeah. you. Are you fuming? Or are you saying, oh, it's Drogba though? What? No, I'm fuming. Yeah. But Drogba and that, because I used to, they were the type of games I enjoyed more. Saying they early, like, his strengths were my strengths. Not okay, that yeah. I was better than him at the strengths, but... You like the physical. The physical. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, when it would come to the physical, I want, I want that. It. I don't want to... <laughs> It's a Jamie Vardy and that that's spinning and running down the channels and I'm like, nah, that's long. Might do but, my knee. Yeah, it's literally. <laughs> but I know Drabble wants to stand up against you and wants to show you how strong okay. he is. So them kind of players I, I enjoyed. But see now, everyone's a running behind guy, isn't it? Because like, yeah. everyone plays high line. This yeah. is what I'm saying. We've seen <laughs> people do things. Now I'm saying, why are we asking every defender to play the same way when we don't ask every forward or every winger to play the same way? Yeah. Everyone has to keep a high line and just play into people's strengths. Like, like obviously Vardy sick but like there was people that played like him but no defence played not every defenders or every defence played high so yeah. he just wasn't exposed like Andrew Johnson AJ that was that was the same he, his model was the same just get the touch in behind running behind Darren Bent players that just play on the shoulder we've always seen that but now because everyone's defence wants to play a higher line 
Just playing to people's trumps. Yeah, it's mad. Wow. I don't get involved tactically. It's just it's baffling. Everyone's <laughs> a G. I, I blame I blame Pep because he come in and absolutely bopped everyone off the park. Yeah, and it's just I mean. everyone's Every trying to pop, like play now, isn't it? Like, yeah, like I've seen a few Sunday league teams playing out from the back. But see what see what Sundays. Yeah, I'm not to, man. I'm not to this Sundays, but you're playing against like average like politicians and geography yeah, yeah. teachers and that. And then people brag about, but that's a, that's a story for another day. Anyway, people so. brag about so, like winning in that. Like I know people that would prefer to play on a Sunday than a Saturday. Saturday for who though? Exactly. Nah. But Sunday not. you're playing against like your 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 you're substitute teacher in that. And yeah. You're, <laughs> do you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's wild. mad. Yeah, it's wild. That. But <laughs> back to you. Anyway, um, you've done well. You you do well at Everton. City come for you. Like this is City with money. I know you wanted to go. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I wanted to go. Um, I kind of made that clear to the club. Like, I just said basically, the time for, well, I was twenty seven, and yeah. they were trying to challenge. At that time, Everton weren't trying to challenge. I was like, I'm not going to have many more opportunities to go to a team that wants to challenge. So yeah, this is kind of where it's at. This is what I want to do, um, and I understood that. They didn't want me to go because we had a good we had a good squad, you know what I mean? And possibly at that time, before the, the squad was assembled at City, ours was stronger. Yeah. But they wasn't going to be patient to see anyone develop City. They were just going to go and get a squad to compete. Um, and I wanted to be a part of that. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was like unfortunate the way it happened because the way it's perceived isn't the reality. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I knew the person that was negotiating for both sides knew what was happening and I knew what was happening and I'm always the, the thought process of was I'm going to have to put a transfer request in and it was explained to me you know what the Everton fans are like they're very passionate yeah. so if they, you put a transfer request in and the club leak it there's no going back for the fans wait wait so see when a player puts someone in they don't have to, to no it doesn't oh, have to wow. come out it doesn't have to come out I thought it's, it's just it, no it doesn't have to but it comes out so the club, everybody knows. You're a bad guy. No, yeah. not you're a bad guy that he's asked to leave. Yeah, yeah. But if you, if like with the Everton fans or any fans say, if he doesn't come out, I know I'm not going. I know okay, I wasn't going, but yeah, if it yeah. comes out, I know there's no going back. So I'm thinking, this is, <laughs> this is interesting. So then I'll, it come out, I was thinking, I'm going to have to go because they're not going to allow the hostility between me and the fans to just kind of affect our relationship. So, that was what I was explained to me. So I thought, yeah, I, I want to do it. It was hard to do. Yeah. Because you have to like send a letter. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah, yeah you have to literally draft up a letter <laughs> and give it to the manager or the club secretary and stuff like well, that. Well, that formal, you can't just go and like see the chairman, like listen. I've I'm been a- saying that for like three weeks before. I'd been going to see the manager every day. <laughs> like I'd been driving into training. I'd like training was say 45 minutes. I'd get on the phone to my brother. We'd talk about the conversation that I was going to have with the manager the whole way in I'd get out of the car he'd wind me up my brother would wind me up to a point <laughs> where I'd get up go in there do the same thing like literally for two weeks I was I was doing that and he's like nah nah he was just like nah it's not happening I, then I was training on my own for a bit and then it kind of happened but they said you can't turn down yeah and, and I said it even for like a year or so uh, it was it was hostile because we still City were higher than Everton but they weren't competing yeah for so I'm saying I'm leaving to compete. We're not competing, so it's kind of like. But then I've, obviously now, everyone's realised it was the right decision. To Let's be honest, me. the money couldn't say no to it, did you? I was doing all right before, you know. <laughs> I was doing, <laughs> things were all right before, but yeah. I don't, but that's what I'm saying. That's the perception of. That's what made us a good group at Cities because that was the only reason everyone thought we went there. Okay, you only go for the money. There was a rumor that everyone who they bought, like when. Yeah. They started buying the double your wages. But everyone was doubling, like, Everton doubled my wages. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> from, See, nobody from knows that though. No one's signing for less. <laughs> no yeah, one's going less, to a yeah. new club for less money. <laughs> like, pretty much everyone that goes to a new club. It's double, more or less. Pretty much double. Okay. It might not be exactly double, like, but it's, it's nice. It's a nice increase. And that's the <laughs> thing, like, when people say that, like, what I did with Man City, it's the same process that happened with Everton and Wolves. But Wolves were happier, happier to let me go. Yeah, yeah. That's the only difference. It wasn't 
nothing different happened in the negotiation or anything like it was just okay we need to let you go and Everton obviously didn't want him and that was that's okay but the outcome was great in terms of what it meant for my career I think you might be no no I'm trying to think this is you might be the one who's been bought for the most I'm trying to mean? think like 20 getting bought for 22 mil yeah 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 it was, uh, I might be wrong time. I might be wrong no no I wasn't no, no, on that's been on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I confirm, but yeah, but yeah, 22 mil. That's not bad. Yeah, it was all right at the time. That's it was all bad. right to be fair. Now that's, yeah, that's I mean, that's, uh, goalkeepers. That's even like that's like League One and yeah, there. wait, the championship players <laughs> yeah. going to them peas now. But now nah, to be fair, and it's never something you, you kind of think about. It was like I think Rio was 30. Then yeah, there was another defender that was like 27. I think I think it might have been. Thiago Silva them times going to PSG yeah yeah and then it was or Pepe maybe going to Real Madrid okay yeah, yeah. and then it was that was it so I was in like at that time like top four or five purchases for a defender you know what I mean so <sighs> yeah it was nice but I was going to play with like Colo Torre like Adebayor Carlos Tevez Gareth Barry Aguero yeah but I wasn't there then oh you know okay, I mean? okay so yeah. they came so the team that was there were like we're going to compete we're really going to compete with them, with, with the top teams. You see, when you're at City, you get injured again, innit? Yeah. Man. And you start picking up knocks. Yeah. Are you blaming yourself or is it just unlucky? Yeah, I never really blame myself because I thought I was doing what was right. And it was different injuries then. Like one was a, um, a knee injury that kind of was just a freak accident. Um, the other was um, a hamstring. That was a bad one. I blame myself for that because oh. I missed the uh, I missed the World Cup. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that was that was frustrating, and it affected the start of the next season for me because I was stubborn and believed I was fit. I didn't do enough training over the off season and came back, and I wasn't really fit. Yeah. So then I missed, like I wasn't performing well in preseason. So it was like Mancini's first year, and that's when Colo and Vinny were were playing. Yeah, yeah. And then later on in the season. Colo got suspended. So I think it might have been the Rooney goal, the overhead kick. Yes. Was it three? three I don't four, know what three? the score was, but I think it was that game when literally Colo was due to play. And then it was like in a preparation. That day, we told he suspended. He okay. hadn't come out yet. And then I was going to play. So then I played literally. The club weren't going to buy a centre back. So I played all that season. We won the FA Cup. Yeah. And then I was in the team then. Not decent. Yeah. So then, so when you're injured and you're off season, do you holler at the club to try and give, like, you know, like you're back now, that like it's new technology now, you can get a plan from the physio and not download it off the internet and write it down? Oh, yeah, nah, too. Yeah, I had them from before. The physios were really good, to be fair. Um, or, like, most of them I've worked with, like, Steve Kemp, who is now the England head physio. He was an apprentice. So he was one of the ones that helped me probably the most learn, like, different habits and for exercises because he was an apprentice physio at Wolves second okay. time I done my knee okay okay because the first time it was just a shambles so he actually knew you and stuff yeah. yeah so then obviously going through I could always reference stuff he'd said and, and told me to do so I did that and then I went to Everton and they had a good setup. there was a guy who came and I think he's at West Ham now he was really good but then when I went to City they were like really on it they I won't say anymore but they was like always trying to evolve yeah yeah Um. <clears throat> so they helped me a lot and as I said, I've always known how important that was for my career. So I paid attention, but at, at, at City, I probably missed the most games through injury, but I understood that that was going to come. I'd been lucky enough to play six, seven seasons in a row. So yeah, that's mad. It's that's going yeah, to happen. Do you feel pressures when you're at City like to win something because of the the stigma that comes with like a, a club that's spending so much money? Like, Is it like you have to win something this season? No, we never had that pressure. That wasn't put on us by anyone. There was an expectation of us to do well and yeah. compete. Probably the, the first title, the chairman, like, great guy. That was probably the only time he's probably said, yeah, you need to win this. Okay. Like, that was kind of the only time you felt like it meant more to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the other times it was just, no, you just perform, just do exactly what, these literal messages would do exactly what you've been doing to get here and we will be okay because the team and the squad we'd assembled was 
was good. Yeah, you know what I mean, so was that the Aguero goal? Yeah, that was the Aguero goal. Man. <laughs> that was that was that was mad, mad moment. That did you not think you'd fucked it? I nah. I, at first, no. When they can, when we conceded the first goal, no. When they scored the second goal, <laughs> it got real. <laughs> <laughs> got really real then that's when I started to like panic and thinking like and it's funny because I spoke to this about Gareth Bale a couple few times like I'm thinking I can't go to pick up my kids from school I can't go on holiday <laughs> I don't want to leave the house like these are the things I'm thinking about whilst we're in the game I'm thinking I'm not coming out man this is it this is me now like I'm like it's over yeah you know I mean I was and then that goes in do you know I remember that because my dad's Liverpool, I'm Arsenal, and we don't want Man United to win the league. So when Aguero comes up, like we actually celebrate like we're City fans. <laughs> yeah, but now the worst thing is, that's what like, so after that was the Euros. Yeah. And um, Liverpool players, exactly that. Because that meant, they. I think that was their 19th. So that yes, equaled they were equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it meant like, it was real to them. I was like, it's that deep. That's <laughs> it's, mad, it's that's that mad. Deep, yeah. But you see like, you win the Prem, you're ringing your brother like, bro, but you know, I'm he's a fuming, winner. yeah, because we were due to uh, we went on holiday, and obviously this time he's playing, so he'd he'd had different holidays to me because his his time off was different. Yeah, yeah. So he was away, so he didn't come to the oh. game. <laughs> Probably one of the only games he's never really okay. come to when he could have. Yeah, but because he he was going back to preseason a little bit earlier, he had to go away then, and I was going. I don't, I don't think I went to meet him that year, but yeah, he was. Is fuming. <laughs> no, nah, it was. Ne- it's, that's the one thing I could say about my brother. It was never a rivalry. It was never a competition. It was just like that's big bro. You like, I might be competing with him, but he's never competing with me. Like, that, there was never a thing that was a. That was that was never played with. That was never structured. It was just that's big bro. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, all, it's all love at the end of the day. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you spoke about the club always evolving. Was it was the difference big from when you arrived till obviously no. you've only just left? Was it that big? Like yeah. you know, you look at the even the training ground. It's like right next to the yeah, stadium. stadium. And, yeah, yeah, it's huge. Like it's the tr- transition is huge. But what I will give them credit for is we were told about this like when we were signing. This was going to happen. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. How we're seeing Man City now, that has been happening for ten years, and it's been spoke about for that long. Like this owner, this ownership group is. It's not a fluke. Yeah, they're on it. They own 10 clubs and now one of the biggest teams and clubs in the world. Like, that was what their plan was, you know what I mean? So they just made it clear that our responsibility is to to win tr- trophies and compete and theirs was to expand everything. And yeah, the transitions, like training ground was smaller. Like, we're going on pre-season tour and we're saying we're from Manchester and people asking if we're Man United. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, but now yeah. it's that's not the case now. Like now nah, everyone's wearing blue now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the city, obviously, like my oldest son and his friends, like they don't know or remember really Man United being. They know Man United are a team, but oh wow! Like this generation okay. of people now, 15 and younger, say from seven, eight to 15, only know City being the best team in Manchester. So in that's years to idea. come, their fan base in Manchester will be will be huge. Okay. Why you why you've been at City, you must have seen like a mad prank or something so mad. Like you, you played with Balotelli, like you must have yeah. seen something mad. It's Mario. I said it, it, it he was mad. <laughs> but I I I, I still realised that he was twenty one at yeah. the time and he, there was a lot of weight on his shoulders. Like he was the next big hope for Italy. Yeah. He must have had pressure of being a black player for Italy. You know what I mean? Coming to a foreign country. Um, but yeah, Mario was was entertaining. Um, the one, what I would say, one was we heard he um, he went to collect his car <laughs> like early on. So like, say he's he's bringing his car over, but obviously it's it's right hand drive, right hand drive. So <laughs> yeah, but he yeah. doesn't know that it's the opposite side of the road. So we like <laughs> literally drove it from where we collected it from and crashed it like, oh, no. <laughs> instantly because obviously it was new to him. But I'm thinking. I went to Greece later on in my career and I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. I'm thinking, wow, like this is hard. And I'm yeah. like 30. <laughs> I mean, so 32, 21, yeah. so 21 when you've probably only been driving 18 months or whatever. Yeah, it's, it must have been mad. But again, he was he was harmless. He just I just think he he needed to channel his talent because he was talented, man. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. That's mad. That's <laughs> that is hilarious. Um 
you know, you said you was a Villa fan mm. up until Everton. Yeah, yeah. You see, when you signed for him, did that love come back? Oh, yeah. Like, when I left City, I only wanted to go to Aston Villa. Oh, okay, okay. I, that and was the happened. only team I wanted to go for. So and what, you're then, telling your agent, I only want to go Villa? Yeah, so I'm speaking to them. So, okay. Um, Shea Given was there. I spoke to the manager um, and the chief exec or the, the sporting director at the time was like, but he knew I wanted to go there. So yeah. This is how to kind of try and take the mic a little bit. <laughs> so I had options from three other teams. It was Stoke, Hall and West Brom. And it, only them teams because they all had British managers. I only wanted to work with a British manager now. Yeah. Because I'd played for England under Capello and I'd worked with Pellegrini and, and Mancini. And now I'm at the stage of my career where I may need to tweak my schedule to remain fit. And British managers would understand that yeah, a bit yeah. more. So that was my decision. So these were the teams. So it wasn't the case of what team you're going to go to. It was who I want to play for. So the Villa one was like key because Lambert was the coach. Obviously British and I wanted to play for Aston Villa. The chief exec knows that I want to play for Aston Villa. So I'm saying these are the offers I've got. Yeah. I'll take less to come to you. <laughs> and he's saying, take less than what you're willing to take less. What I'm saying. What no. are you talking about? <laughs> you know these are the offers. Yeah. I will come for this. That's fine. And he's saying, nah, we want to give you this. I say, I can't come for that. <laughs> and I'm, this is me and my brother doing this, like, because it's Villa. Yeah. Don't need an agent yes, to do yeah, this. Yeah. Um, this is open conversations. He's saying, yeah, well, we can sign Senderos. <laughs> you have to sign Senderos then. And I went to West Brom. So I went to West Brom after that. Because, hold on, hold on, Yeah. So they said, we'll sign Senderos. They said, well, Senderos is willing to sign for this amount. I said, you have to sign Senderos. <laughs> Bear in mind, I <laughs> Better think... from you then. I think Senderos is just coming from Fulham, who had just gone yeah, down. Yeah, And I'm coming from City, just won the league. And I'm saying, oh, okay. you're trying to offer us the same. I said, come on. It's taking a... Yeah. So I, just be respectful. And I'm yeah. saying, I've, I've got other options that are better than yours, but I'm willing to take less because I want to play for Aston Villa, so... I went to West Brom because Alan Irvine was my assistant manager at Everton. It was really good for me. And then the two coaches, one was Keith Downing, who was my youth team manager at Wolves, <laughs> and um, Robert Kelly was um, like youth development officer at Wolves. So again, I just knew them. They knew me. So I just wanted that more than to play for any team in particular. Yeah. It was like, who are the people I'm going to be working with every day and I'm going to want to give more for? You was linking up with people you who you met. After, and yeah, stuff, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy. It's a small world football. Yeah. It's a small world. But that was that was a conscious decision when I was leaving City. It was like I need to know that when I'm dealing with this, the manager or whoever it is, I can look in their eye and it's an honest conversation. Yeah. What was your England experience like? Uh, youth up to the the seniors. It's horrible. It's the hate going. Really? Yeah, it's the hate going to uh, England. Why? You London man. <laughs> <laughs> you're different <laughs> you're, you're different man <laughs> you're different but as I said it was because of like for whatever reason you London man think anyone from up north soft <laughs> that's how you London yeah, man was yeah, thinking yeah. if he's not from London there's, there's nothing about them but that wasn't the case you know what I mean but now nah, in regards to England it was like I couldn't really relate to to being away and and that kind of football and it was it was a lot of stuff and there was a lot of there's a lot of politics yeah I was going to say politics. was so, it still segregated like split like you got yeah, north kind and of, south yeah. yeah it was like London and, and, and north so like I'll give you an example of even just like the selection process was was weird so there was time when me Kevin Nolan Sean Wright Phillips even though Sean's from from Danny yeah. but he was up north yeah. most of his time we were playing we were playing for like Wolves Bolton and Man City, all in the championship, playing every week. But we, we're not even on the bench for the 18s and the 21s. But you're playing first team. We're playing first team, and there's lads that are at London clubs playing for the reserves and playing. I'm just like, just just the politics because it looks better on the team sheet that he's representing yeah, Chelsea, yeah. he's representing Arsenal. But we've got 50 games, like 50 real games in the first team. But these men have been making the bench. Obviously, their their clubs are bigger, but. But in terms of the seniors, yeah, that was really good. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the seniors. Why Why do you think your team didn't do as well? Like your generation, like the golden, was it the golden team? Yeah, yeah. That didn't was, do as I well. was like, 
don't put me in that. You know, what I, mean? I was in that <laughs> squad, but yeah, I was competing with some of them. Well, I'm putting you in it. You was, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. Picked. I was part of the squad, but yeah, nah. The um, I think there was a lot of factors, but I think the formation was a thing. Like England only played four four two. Yeah, and we had players that were better than that and different. Like I'd say, if we was to play f- three five two, maybe with three midfielders and two up front or whatever. Like Joe Cole, for instance. Talent now, that was Joe Cole when I was young. Like, with that social media, we all knew who Joe Cole yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, before you'd seen him, there was a kid at West Ham. <laughs> Doing a mad tricks, yeah, mad. Yeah. He was the guy. And then you see him, like, wow. But he could only play left or right wing for England. But you put him as a 10. It's a problem. It's a real problem. Yeah. But he wasn't going to get given that responsibility or allowed to play there because England only play 4-4-2. Like... We had Lamp- Lampard, Gerrard and Scholes. One of them has to go and play on the wing. <laughs> like, why? It's mad, isn't it? You change your formation and get them all in the team. And now, imagine like, Ashley Cole as a wing back. Big problem, isn't it? Because we never had a left winger, really. So just give that responsibility to Ashley Cole and go and play on the, at the wing back. Like, it wasn't that hard to to see, but there's, there's just a, a thing that England... One, we have to play four four two, and we have to wear one to eleven. I was just like, why does it have to? Like, other teams don't do that. Yeah, it doesn't have to yeah. be that rigid. You know what I mean? So that that's my opinion on it anyway. Fair. Do you think this generation, including the, the the team you coach, are better than your generation? I think there's more talent. There's probably more talent in other areas. Well, actually, no, I don't. Let me think about it. No, I think they're a better team, hundred percent. Yeah, but I don't think there's more talent. I think if you go through the team, Ash, Rio, John Terry, they play in today's team. I think they play. I'm not saying the others. Yeah, yeah. Don't play like the current team are, are poor. But that's what I think we need to get away from. If you're saying someone's better than the other one, doesn't mean the other one's poor. It just yeah. means they're really good. Yeah. But like. Rooney plays. Rooney plays for England. I'm telling you right now. Rooney <laughs> plays to think. for England. I don't care where he's playing. <laughs> he's playing. Gerard plays for England. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You know what I mean? So, in terms of uh, players, the generation's probably better previous, but team, I don't. I think this team's better. Okay. I think Walker. I think right back is probably the most stacked it's ever been. Yeah, you've got Walker, Trent. Reese James. Yeah, you know what I mean? But like it was going up. Glenn Johnson was serious though. Yeah. Meeks yeah. had his time as well. You know what I mean? So we had some serious, but it was it was never all together at one time like these now. Probably yeah. the worst time to be a right back. Yeah, me. I hear that. I hear that. Um all right, let's go back to Villa, yeah. Why did you tweet that tweet? Was it an accident or Yeah, it was a general accident. Like Was it just a picture of the car? Yeah. Literally just that. Because like, who tweets that? <laughs> yeah, so what true. happened is the story goes. Jack Grealish hasn't passed his test yet. I'm telling him to like helping him yeah. get like get a car or whatever. And uh he sent me a picture um of this car, that car. Yeah. I'm saying you can't get that. That can't <laughs> be your first car. The insurance is gonna be wild. Like you can get the same looking car, but just a smaller engine. It's like a okay then. And that was it. And, and the phone was on WhatsApp, the, the picture was on WhatsApp, so it was stayed to my phone yeah. and then I was driving home after this the Liverpool game and my brother phoned me and said, what's, what's going on? So what do you mean? He said, oh, it's, it's going wild on Twitter. And that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm in the car yeah. driving home and then you just kind of develop from that. But because of the stick I was getting and I was kind of made a scapegoat yeah. for that situation anyway, I was like, no, nah, I'm not taking it down. <laughs> no chance. That's up. And the worst thing is, I didn't even have that car. My mum was like, should should tweet the car you really have? I was like, no. <laughs> Stanley fuel to the fire. What did you, what did you have? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because um, Stan Collymore went for you, innit? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. So again, that was a thing. Like, so I don't know him, but I, I knew him yeah. at the time. And bef- before that, obviously, both Birmingham guys and stuff like that. So he kind of like came for me and the people he was working for at the time allowed it to happen. And my point was, you've retired for mental health issues or you said that contributed to your retirement. Yeah. How do you know I haven't got them issues? Yeah, because he could be triggering them, innit? You don't know yeah. that. But yet you want to 
allow and, and cause an issue to kind of push the narrative of, yes, it is so-and-so, it is this. And I'm thinking, I'm 30, I was 32 at the time. You didn't even play to you. You retired at 31. So you don't know what it's like. Yeah. So you can't compare what it's like or the situation because you've never done this. You've never played to this age. So it was different. So I was just like, don't be that guy when, and what happened was he was, he was trying to get personal. So I knew it was serious when people that he played with contacted me, said, do you need me to out him about some stuff? Because they had some, there's some real stories <laughs> yeah, about him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I can nah, imagine. Man, it, I don't want it to be that. And obviously, my brother was there when he was there. So your brother knows. So this, I've got real stories <laughs> on him. Like real <laughs> stories. I was like, nah, because this that's deep. They're yeah, deep stories. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going down that route. So I just had to say, this is what it is. If 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 it's gonna be personal, then we can resolve this whatever however. And he posts the message that I'm what, sending him. I'm the, sending the him DMs. a text message. Oh, the text. Or DM whatever it was. And he's he's posting them. I was like, this, yeah, he's I moving can't win wild. I can't I can't win. So I just left it then and then as I said, it was more people was allowing him to 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 do that. And I don't think that would happen now because I think the awareness around mental health and stuff. Yeah. I never struggled with it. I wasn't struggling with it. I'm not going to use it as an excuse for performances, but he didn't know that. So you shouldn't be doing them things yeah. to, to potentially contribute to someone. Yeah, I hear that. Mm. I'm just like, I'm just going to say, you, if you want you to grow in your punditry, don't become one of them pundits who just says something to fuel the fire. You know, like goes with the fans. Like, yeah, like fans are fickle, innit? Like, it's mad because they're probably the only loyal element of the game. Yeah, you're the second person to say that. Yeah, players and clubs ain't loyal. Like, the day you're not good enough, she out, mate. <laughs> she out. You know what I mean? And whether yeah. that be a player moving to a different club or a club saying, I've never seen a club renew a player's contract because he's been playing crap. You know what? Yeah. You've been shit the last two seasons. Here's a new deal. Are you out? But when a players doing it it's it's hard for to see you know what I mean and I've seen players being told to train on their own and just do ridiculous things and being told to come in at mad times when just, no one's there and yeah, yeah I'm just saying there's a lot of things that happen but it's only the fans that are loyal so it's hard for them to see any other side when you're the only ones that are loyal to the game yeah I hear that I hear that all right when did you realize it was time to hang out when, when I was asked to go on trial seriously <laughs> When I was, I said um, it was Bolton and Sheffield because again now I'm making decision on I'm not moving house. I want I live up north. Yeah, I want to be local to the area so I could be around family and stuff. And Bolton was an option, and I had a couple of friends there that said you might not get paid. So I'm like, oh, not into. You that. might not get paid. Yeah, they wasn't getting paid. It was just before they was decline of administration and stuff. so I was like oh. I got bills to pay bro yeah man I gotta keep the lights but up. your money's long anyway you've won the nah, pen twice nah 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 yeah, but the... England Euros yeah FA Cups Mate, your money's long nah these kids need to eat man yeah but yeah, still I mean, it's just about... me. savings long holy what, per zero Wayne, what did Lil Wayne say <laughs> too much money and enough money <laughs> you know what I mean Fact. so like whatever it is there's always a family member you can help you know what I mean yeah yeah so, it yeah. wasn't even that. It was just like, that's a situation I didn't want to be involved in. It was like administration and then the um, the Sheffield one come. It was like, yeah, you can come in for two weeks. I was just like, huh? Yeah. I was just like, I can't, I can't. I just, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. It didn't make sense to go because there's a stigma then. My stock was already low because of, like say from Villa to Greece, then to Sunderland, like that. 12, 18 months was was mad because I had a chance to leave Villa. That's probably my only regret. What not leaving? Is when I, in the January, so I'd signed in the summer, the January LA Galaxy come. you got to go, mate. mate. Oh, oh my listen, God. Listen, you so had to go. I get the call, so we're trying to sign me, Nigel, the young. Yeah. And Ashley Cole. CVG's already there. So I speak to them and I was like, yeah, we, we you're the target. We've got other targets, but we want you. I was like, okay. So I speak to them. I'm saying, we've got a couple of games coming up. Let's do it like next week. Yeah. It's going to happen next week. I come out the team and this, it was around FA Cup game when uh, we played Wickham 
in the cup, FA Cup, and I'm on the bench. Um, and it went off. Like we drew one one, but it went <laughs> off. Like we couldn't get out. We had to wait an hour after the state after the game. Wait, is that when the tunnel. Michael Richards? Yeah, Michael, so, yes, Michael went to yeah, the, yeah, the crowd yeah. and told him to calm down and oh. just try to just defuse it and all that. So it's gone off. But again, it's it, like I'm one that's been targeted. I'm thinking I wasn't even playing. <laughs> so fast forward three days, we're playing Crystal Palace in the league, and uh, I'm back in the team now, and I'm captain. So as I read out the team sheets, all the home fans boo me. This is before the car tweet. This is this is kind of when it started. Yeah, yeah. All the home fans boo me. I'm thinking, what, what? What have I done? Like, yeah, I've contributed to it, but I'm not the factor that we're the reason why where we are. So I was thinking in my head, I'm thinking, nah, I need to show you today. This isn't me. Yeah. So we play the game. We win one their last score. The goal got taken away from me, but I don't know how. <laughs> But yeah, I'll score anyway. I didn't celebrate. And um <laughs> the, the fans did though. Yeah, the fans celebrated. <laughs> of course yeah, they did. Yeah, of course. So then the next day, um <sighs> Villa saying nah, it's not going. Shut up. Yeah. And I but so I would have had to cause real madness. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't. And they would definitely would have leaked it. Yeah, I, I can't I couldn't I wasn't ready for that. Cause that was a different thing. Like that was kind of now my family stopped coming to games because the abuse they're getting and I'm getting. So that's kind of why the love loss for Villa fans isn't really there because again, I can take you booing me and stuff and it's all fun. But when it's targeted at my family and my kids can't come to the yeah, games. Yeah, so it's a like, different yeah, level. Yeah. different. So, but yeah, that was probably only forcing that move to LA. <laughs> your, oh. your kids would have had American accents by now and that, man. I would have. <laughs> I would have had this glow to my skin. This would have been done by a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we don't zoom around here. Nah, nah, nah. Um, do you feel like your career went quick? Yeah. Yeah, man. When people say that to you, like when you're 23, 24, I blink and it's gone. Wow, like, oh, yeah, is is that like I was, say, my son's oldest son's age now when I started. And I've got a son that age. You know what I mean? Like literally. Yeah. I didn't have a kid. When I started playing, now I've got someone that's the age of me when I'm starting playing. So, yeah, it, it, I'd start again tomorrow if I could. Okay. I'd go back and do it all again tomorrow. But yeah, it goes real quick. Do you, a lot of do you questions here. Do you um plan your future while you're playing? Like you've got stuff in place or no? I, got... I didn't. I didn't plan, not a career. You plan things that you might want to do and stuff. Punditry was, wasn't one. Coaching wasn't one. The sporting directorship wasn't one. And then I'll retire and then I sat down with people that I trust to educate me and, and guide me. So then it helped me create a pathway and a plan. And that was that was when I started to feel like, yeah, man, like I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, I, I know. I'm not saying I'm going to get there. I'm not in a rush to get there. But I know like sporting director would be nice. You know what I mean? Academy manager somewhere. Yeah, would be nice, that's so. it. And it's sick that you can study for it now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's the thing. Last last one for me before we wrap up. Um, how do you feel about people, players, fan, players, fans, pundits that undervalue people like yourself, Gareth Barry and James Milner? Like you've played till the latter stages of the 30s and people still say, oh, yeah, they're all right. Yeah, I know. That, 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 I'm okay with saying it about me because I'm okay and I know the lads that you mentioned are okay with their careers but there's nowhere near enough respect given yeah. to them guys like let me break down some stats Gareth Barry got the record for appearances 94% of his appearances were starts mad like and he's what over 600 games isn't it it's wild like, that's mad he's starting that's 17 seasons <laughs> every that's game mad. that's mad not missing a game for 17 seasons like people can't do that nah like the closest to possibly do it is James Milner and he can't really do it I think he's gotta go the next like two seasons and play every game yeah, and, he, and not, be close yeah. you know what I mean so but Millie again like people talk about professionalism and he smashes pre-season for Liverpool every season mate is but he does everything right yeah it's not luck He's not been lucky that he hasn't got injured. He's done everything he needs to do to prevent that from happening. So people like that, like you've got to, they're on the, they're on the 
Ronaldo level of professionalism. Okay. Ronaldo's obviously got more talent than, say, Gareth or, or Millie, but in terms of how they've conducted their self, they're, this, they're on par with them because yeah. you can't perform for that at long. that level yeah, for that long. If, you, if you're not serious about your craft. Yeah, I hear that. Mm. Listen, Jolien, thank you for sharing, yeah, no man. Problem. Thank you. Okay, quick fire round. Um, favorite player? R9. Better, better. See, a lot of people, your son won't know about R9. He does. <laughs> he does, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. of you, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, love that, love that. Um, most skillful player you faced? Ooh. Luis Saha. Yeah, not Ronaldo. Nah, man. Luis Saha, give me a real taste. <laughs> okay, okay. Favorite pre match meal? Porridge. Plain. Yeah, yeah. no, no, with, with uh, a bit of honey and that and some nuts. Okay, okay. Um, biggest adrenaline rush you've had in football? Ooh, good question. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, I'm gonna Winning say, the Prem. Yeah, nah. Nah? That nah, was different, man. That wasn't like a moment. That was just a feeling. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. The biggest moment. I would say. I don't know. No, no eyes, no eyes. Um, what's your superstitions before a game? What were they? What are they? Yeah. Uh, always put my left side on before my right. It's quite common now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was it. Oh, actually, there was, and there was a couple of songs I used to have a listen to. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, worst trainer or best on a match day? Yaya Torre. Serious? Guerrero. Yaya. It was, a, it was a mess in training. I thought you'd have said Balotelli, but yeah, that's a shock. Um, because he was like, Yaya was the best on a match day. Yeah, the best. Like, that was it. Okay, okay. Um, most embarrassing moment? Ooh. Um, most embarrassing moment? I deflected a shot in at Anfield one time. <laughs> In the Derby? Nah, oh, for Man City. City. So, so, but I was still getting Everton backlash from it. <laughs> Liverpool, so that was, yeah, that went great. Mad. Um, what's your go-to initiation song? I'm oh, a mess, mate. I, I did Wonderwall <laughs> at um, Everton and then I did... <laughs> Mix is still caves me about this today. I did a little Wayne song at, at Aston Villa. <laughs> I'm going in. Wrapped a song. Oh, it's horrendous. <laughs> Um, on, I, I've done I've done 21 seconds from mine but Oof. yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> listen it was yeah. mad it was mad um, serious now um, <laughs> any regrets not going to play for LA Galaxy <laughs> yeah yeah sick man Jolien thank you man no, thank no you <laughs>